Gracious Father, this is the first sermon that many of us have heard this year. I just hope and pray that as your word comes forth, that it will not return to That whatever any individual or family might need this hour, biblically and spiritually, that they will be able to partake of your table and be able to receive all that they need to have. Lord, I ask now that you speak to us. Speak through me. That, Lord, your word might be shared. Lord God, we love you and we thank you for this word-sharing moment. In Christ's name we pray. to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are rude, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down in the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. We like to use for a thought for this Sunday in 2018, you need to know your purpose. Know your purpose. 2018, and say what your job or career is. One day that'll be over. But you still need to know your purpose. To those individuals that are comic book enthusiasts and action moviegoers, Superman is one of the greatest, more popular known among superheroes. Is that right? And while the recent Justice League movie started with Batman and Wonder Woman organizing a group of metahumans to form the Justice League, the renowned Superman was nowhere to be found. And two things are apparent leading up to his lack of appearance. 
He was killed by another Kryptonian by the name of Doomsday. And number two, no matter the power, knowledge, and ability of Superman, Kryptonite always seemed to make him weak, faint, and bring him to his knees. And like Superman in the more recent Justice League movie, some of us too were missing and failed to report to duty. Somewhere in these past 12 months, you were absent and were not able to fulfill your role or something or someone had gotten in your way and made you helpless and unable to show up. You could have not showed up for work or showed up for something you need to do, but somebody or someone got in the way and kept you from doing what you needed to do. And these two things that affected Superman, my brothers and sisters, can also affect you and me. Either you have met Doomsday or your form of kryptonite. And either one has made you weak and caused you to fall to your knees. Now some of us will say, Reverend, I don't know anything about comic books and superheroes and supervillains. Some of you will say that you don't know anything about, about kryptonite. Some may even say or think that I, I, I don't even care nothing or don't know much about metahumans or super villain, but, but you do know something about doomsday and, and you do know something about kryptonite. It may not be in those names because to us, metaphorically and symbolically, doomsday is the devil and kryptonite is seen. You do know about things in life that that have tripped you up and blocked your way and cut your path and made you absent that was sinful and destructive and counterproductive for your life. You do know moments about things that have happened these past 12 months where you have been like Superman, where you were not all that you should have been or you were not where you should have been somewhere along the way. You failed to show up where you were needed most. There was someone that needed to count on you as they were trying to pull some things together and bring resources together and serve and help the greater good. It could have been a family. It could have been a neighbor, someone that was needed, but you were nowhere to be found. It could have been somebody in your family or someone on the job or somewhere in the community or even in the church. Somebody was relying on you to show up, but you were nowhere to be found. And when it was time for you to fulfill your purpose and play your part and carry out your role, kryptonite, sin made you unaccounted for. It made you weak and caused you to fall on your knees and fall on your face and caused you to sin and fall short in your life. Your kryptonite could have been adultery. Your kryptonite could have been fornication. Your kryptonite could have been wasting time and wasting money and gambling and fornicating and lying and cheating and stealing. And the only way to recover from kryptonite is to be exposed to the sun. Not the S. You in, but the S O N. I read in John 8 36 that the Son therefore shall make you free. You shall be free indeed. And when you've been exposed to the Son, the change will come in your life. And the Son will expose you to things that you need to be exposed to. And when you've been exposed to the right Son, you can confront the doomsday in your life. You can recover from kryptonite. You can recover from the hangover of sin. You can, you can change your life when you can revive and reclaim the things that you need to reclaim and you can restore and you can regain in your life and you can find the purpose that God has for you in your life but you gotta keep Jesus first in your life not sometimes and not when you want something in your life but Christ has to be first in your life every day you gotta know your purpose all oh, these passages is, uh, remind us of verse 16 that Jesus came to Nazareth where the word said he was brought up. And as was his custom, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day where he, he stood up and, and he read. Jesus, he read. 
after being led in the wilderness by the Holy Ghost, Jesus approached, he was approached and tempted by the devil. Never believe as a Christian because you say and you pray and you know a little bit of scripture that somehow you'll not get arable by the devil. There are times in our lives, brothers and sisters, when, when we are approached and attacked by the devil. However, Jesus overcame the confrontation and the temptation by the, spot, by the power of the Spirit and the knowledge of the Word of God. He returned to Nazareth to attend the assembly church, brothers and sisters. And that it was time for him to publicly stand and read the word. Luke said that this was how Jesus was brought up. It was his custom to go to church, to read the word and to hear the word. When we hear the word custom, the Greek for it is ethos. Ethos in Greek is similar to our word we use, ethos. And when we talk about ethos, ethos has to do with our culture. It has to do with our environment. It has to do with the climate that has been set and created and produced and the climate that we live in. When we read in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 onward, we hear these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. Come on, brothers and sisters. We got to teach our children. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. We're talking about how people live. We're talking about customs and ethos and how a person is brought up, how a young person is raised, not only by the world, but raised by television and raised by computers and tablets, but raised in the custom of the Lord. When Paul addressed Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and 5, Paul said to Timothy, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded that is also inside of you. Sometimes we ought to be able to see in our children where grandmama and mama and granddaddy and daddy and the church has had a hand on them. We got to teach and raise them. Jesus is speaking about how, how he was brought up. But when we look around, there, there seems to be not as much concern about the customs and about the ethos and the upbringing and the raising that is being created for a godly life. We're living in times before of creating all kinds of traditions and all kinds of customs and all kinds of climates and environments that are anti-religious and anti-Christian and even anti-human. We're living in times where folk are creating corporate cultures to assault and rape. A time where educational models are dealing with teachers that are sexually uh, intimate with students. A government that is power hungry and money, money gripping. High tech lynching and the internet have become a den for thieves and a den for sin and a den for crime. We're not concerned enough about what our children are being exposed to. Verse 17 said to us, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where he was written. As the people assembled, like we are this hour on the Sabbath day, the congregation was attentive to the ritual that hour. They didn't have no tablet or smartphone to distract them from what the minister was getting ready to say or do. This man named Jesus walked in and stood before the people. And the minister gave him a long scroll, a book entitled The Prophet of the Prophet Isaiah. And Jesus took the book and opened the book. He looked at the Hebrew writings and found a scripture for their hearing. He knew what he was doing as he purposely and methodically found a place to read. And mind you that Luke said, this was how he was brought up. He 
just didn't automatically do it. And even though he was a son of God, a child of God, folk didn't look at him and just magically assume that because he was a Christ-born child that he was going to come up and, and just read. Somebody took the time to teach him how to read. And sometimes when we hear our children not being able to read, it's not their fault. It's because we're not bringing them up to read. Turn the television off. Put the tablet down. Get a book and read so I can hear you read and read aloud. Somebody taught Jesus how to read. He took the book and opened it. And he read the scriptures. And the word said that he read it based upon how he was brought up. How they were raised. How they practiced their customs and their beliefs. See, their religious and educational training was not separate, but it was one and the same. When the families went to the temple, they, they did not travel as individuals, but as a community, as a family, husbands and wives and parents and children. They went together, yes they did, when they went to church. We read in Luke 2 and 46, and it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. The church brothers and sisters, his teachings and his doctrines, even to read and write, was not foreign to the people and not even foreign to the children. They believed in teaching. They believed in teaching. They believed in teaching. They believed in practicing. They believed in practicing and living living and practicing and imparting the word and sharing the word of God. If you come and hear what takes place on church and you never share with anybody what was prayed and never share with anybody what scripture was read, never share with anybody what word was given to you to feed on spiritually, you're missing the whole point. There was a time when especially black folk were not even allowed to read or write, much less have a Bible. There were laws in place not that long ago that discouraged educating black children. There were practices that forbade black people from having a book. It was always okay for us to be athletic, always okay for us to dance to jig, always okay for us to listen to music, but it was never always okay for you to have a book in your hands. Now we have full access to education, full access to Bibles, and children and parents have to be begged to get their children in school and to make sure that folk are in church, even when they get to school, rather than get their lesson, rather than listen to the teacher, rather than get all the training that they can receive. Parents are more concerned with what type of clothes they got on, what type of shoes they got on, what kind of style they got on, and keep it up with the Joneses while nothing is going inside of their head. And now children come to school with computers and tablets and smartphones and their board of education still is not realized and parents still do not realize that even with all this technology, our children can barely read to comprehend, barely to compute, to have a basic math. They come with headphones, earphones, bus phones, Bluetooth, and it's not their fault when they should have left it at home. And it's not their fault where it is the church. Where are the parents? Where are the ministers? Where are the elders of the community? Where is the body of Christ to encourage reading and to encourage writing and encourage morals and to encourage the faith of living for a mighty God? Where are we? We got to know our purpose. There Jesus stood before the people based upon his childhood, upbringing, and read the passage that many of us have come to know in Isaiah 61, verse 1. And the people looked and listened. And he said in Luke 18 and 19, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, 
because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to bind the broken heart, to preach deliverance, deliverance to the captives, and recover the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year, yes he did, of the Lord. If we are to have a great year in 2018, and not be beaten by doomsday or weakened by whatever had become your kryptonite. We need to know our purpose. We need to properly assess our personal problems. And we need to embrace the power of preaching. As Jesus stood and read the scripture on that day, one thing is very clear. Jesus knew his God-given purpose. So that he was reading as if every word applied to him. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. God has anointed me. God has sent me. He understood that, that he was anointed. He, he understood that he was set aside and set apart for a divine purpose in the Lord. Do you realize that you too have been anointed and set apart and set aside? If you don't realize it, in 2018, you need to come to a knowledge that you are anointed and you are appointed and you are divinely assigned by the Lord. You need to know your God-giving purpose. This is, it does not matter your, your age or, or your profession or your personal goals or your life status or your skill set or even what setbacks you had last year or your past or your mistakes. You got to know your God-given purpose. We never read about Jesus just sitting around in the scripture doing nothing. We never read about Jesus aimlessly doing nothing in the word of God. I read in Luke Acts 10 and 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And Luke said he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God 